going to be hand decorating some of my brand new Inktober mini Lilliputian Living. If you guys haven't heard about it or checked it out in any capacity, um, I spent my Inktober doing world building prompts for my webcomic, Seven Inch Kara, which you guys can read at sevenincharacom And I collected them all along with the world building descriptions that I had originally shared on Instagram into this beautiful and fairly thick 64 page little mini comic. So you get 31 illustrations and 31 descriptions plus a little calendar with all the days marked on it. So I am going to decorate these with a few different pretty things. I've got a gold wink of Luna. I've got a clear wink of Luna. I've got a white glaze pen, a wink of Stella. I've got another gold sparkle pen. I've actually got some gold pens I need to throw away because they are just not functioning anymore. I've got a black sparkle pen. I've got a black interference pin in that there is an interference color which makes it so pretty. I mean I've got loads of really beautiful really beautiful um, what's the name? Kuretake products and Sakura of America products that could be used to decorate this mini and make it really cute. And I opted to go with neutral craft paper as the cover. I thought it would be really cute. Now it's kind of referencing Southern Living, which is a popular fancy people magazine here in the South. I say fancy people because dude, those houses are like ginormous plantation homes. Like real humans don't live in those. Celebrities live in those and super rich people live in those. So I like to decorate every one of my covers a little differently. And then I sign them and the level of decoration is usually fairly minimal, just enough to make them fancy. And I really only do that for like the first year's printing. Reprints, I don't normally decorate like this. I will sometimes, but not, not always. And I try to just pick out little color accents that will sort of bring it together, make it look really cute. Now, I feel like little hand assembled minis have kind of fallen out of favor. They used to be really popular and I'm wondering if it's because artists don't necessarily trade as much as they used to. Uh, I'm open for trades. I think the reason a lot of artists aren't don't necessarily do trades is they feel uncomfortable approaching other artists for it. So I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna set up a sign. Now see, my problem is people usually wanna trade their mini comics, not for my mini comics, but like for some of the other things I make, which that's not in the spirit of it when you have mini comics on the table. So I may have to specify, like I'm always willing to trade like for like. So if you've got charms or other like cute things like that, I will totally trade you for your charms, but I don't necessarily want to trade my wooden charms for your mini comic when I have my own mini comic. So maybe specifying my charms ahead of time, we can kind of have a better result, right? There's really only one way to find out and that's by experimenting. And if it works, that's great. And if it doesn't work, that's okay too. So what's neat about the glaze and you guys have actually seen me botch glaze on this channel before because I'd never really used it and it comes out very thin and weak. And I was like, well, that's not white enough but it dries very opaque. 
So with the Wink of Stella, the clear Wink of Stella um, has like this gold glitter in it, which is really pretty, but it takes a really long time to dry. So that's something you're gonna want to keep in mind if you're using that to decorate your minis. And I gotta grab it one more time. I need to, four out of 10, no, 17. And that will show up once it's had a chance to dry. And I'm just gonna work my way through, I think I have 10, no, seven, because my printer ran out of ink. I have seven copies currently of Lilliputian Living. I'm preparing them for Nokas Fest in New Orleans. And I hope they'll do well. I mean, they're kind of a mini, they're kind of a zine. They, a lot of my work occupies sort of that like weird in-between space. So I'm never really sure what to tell people because some, I've had people be like, that is not a zine, that is a barber. And it wasn't that, or I used to call them all ash cans because ash cans is not a reflection of the work inside. It just, you know, it's maybe not as polished as some of your other work or the print quality isn't as high. Like the indication is supposed to be, at least as I was taught at SCAD, the indication is not a reflection that your work doesn't have value, but that this is a small, quickly produced thing to be traded cheaply. And I usually use that term to refer to small, inexpensively produced things that I'm open to trading, or if I give it away, I'm not gonna lose money on it. And I mean, I print these at home using my toner printer. I assemble them myself, I staple them myself. So they're pretty, pretty low investment. Nothing too, too fancy. Ooh, the gold for this particular gel pen is really nice. You can't see it because I'm doing gold on gold, but um, I'll show you guys in a minute. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate it's actually a nice metallic gold, somewhat similar to a signal. I'll zoom in so you guys can see. And I really like, I don't use, um, I know I don't use gel pins super frequently in my work, at least not that you can see, but I love keeping them around for these sort of details or for adding details on commissions. I don't use them in comic work because I find that, you know, the effect you get from them in person is always so much more impressive than the effect I would be able to scan. So I just don't even bother with it. And I think I set my initial asking price for these because they're 60 pages at uh, six dollars and it does it seems like it might be a little bit more than people are willing to pay which is kind of a shame i would pay six bucks for that but um i don't charge more just because i'm decorating the covers i know i i know that is a thing people do and i respect that they respect their time um but since i don't want to have to consistently do it and i like that it's kind of like a cute bonus well, at least to me, in my mind, it's a cute bonus. I know there's plenty of people who really don't care one way or another whether or not the cover has been decorated, and that's fine. But I know there are people who enjoy that and think it's cute too, so. It's all a matter of taste. But, although I don't really enjoy Sakura's white jelly roll, not the glaze, but the jelly roll, I do enjoy their other gel pins and they do see use in my studio. This is the sort of activity that makes for like a good downtime activity since it's really just glorified doodling. Or if it's not your thing and you have a friend who does enjoy doing that sort of work, Maybe you can, if you like the look, but you don't want to spend the time doing it or you don't have the materials, maybe you can work something out with your friend. 
I know I have a lot of friends who enjoy and find that sort of just doodle and decoration to be very relaxing. I know my mom likes it. I even thought about bringing my supplies with me when I go to Louisiana for Nocus Fest, but I really didn't. I, I guess uh, frugality prevailed because I really didn't want to pay to fly a bunch of art supplies. And they don't all have to be the same level of elaborate. That's why I don't raise, or one of the reasons why I don't raise the price. Because I don't want to be tied to a certain level of completion. Basically, I guess I just enjoy keeping things optional. With a lot of these jelly roll gel pins, you can pick them open up open stock at places like Michael's. So you really only need to get the colors you think are going to be useful for your work. So I guess for me, that really means a lot of neutrals as well as interesting interference colors, interesting effects. Silver is actually really good too. And it's also helpful if you're going to do a lot of these, don't even try to do them all in one night. Unless, unless like that's what you want to do. I, I don't think it's necessarily worthwhile to like really push yourself so that you have a bunch of them finished. I think it's better and more relaxing to sort of spread it out over a week. Maybe even invite some friends over and bribe them. Help you decorate covers. Like I said, some people enjoy it. So for some people it's fun. And for some people, the allure wears off really fast. Like I've had fun, but I've done four tonight and it's getting to the point where I'm like, mm. and I still have three more. But see, after giving you all that helpful advice, I'm gonna at least push through and do one more. I do have time this week, I think. I do have time this week to do more of them. But I also know me and I might be like, oh, I don't feel like doing it. I have more important things to do like commissions. Now, if you really decorate your covers and use like 3D embellishment accents on them, you're gonna wanna put them in something that'll kinda help protect them. I don't go that far in my embellishments. Also, people like to flip through uh, books like this, and that's cool. I encourage them to do so, because how do you know what you like unless you get a chance to look at it? I don't want anybody buying my work sight unseen and then being disappointed, which is kind of what I feel like would happen if you're in the habit of selling your books bagged and you don't have a demo copy out that people are allowed to read. You don't have to have them all available to flip through, but having a few out is definitely, in my opinion, a good idea. But if you go a little further with your embellishments than I do, you could put them in those poly bags. Of course, then you would have to charge a little bit more to accommodate from that cost. Of course, the covers might be so dang cute that they'd be irresistible. So you might be able to get away with charging any price you want. I really like making minis. I know um, they can be a little time consuming to make because you're basically either compiling your comic into a small format like this. And that is a, honestly laying that kind of stuff out. It is a lot of work. And we have a tutorial coming up on how to do that.
but it is a lot of work. And it's just for a lot of people, it's not really worth the time investment to continue to do that, which is understandable. And then people like myself find that their sales are declining. And I think it's because minis have kind of become less of an established con thing. So that's kind of a shame. Um, it's one thing if you really don't find them worth your time to do or they're just unnecessary stress or you're too busy. I can completely understand that. But I would love to see more artists, especially artists who maybe have less work to show and it's not worth putting into a perfect bound book. And when I say worth, I don't mean the quality of the art isn't worth it. I just mean there's not enough content that you can justify getting a perfect bound book printed or you're not popular enough that you would maybe recoup that cost. Um, I would love to see people go back to doing using minis as a way. Ooh, ooh I got to fix those eyes. Those eyes got, got ganked up. They look rough. Okay, I'll go in, add a little bit of black to them. It's black gold, so it's going to look cool. But I would love to see minis get a little more love. And part of the problem is also, I don't know about you guys, but there was one person who worked at the office max in Savannah who knew like if I gave them my files that were properly put together, they knew how to get the machines to print double. It's so simple, double sided, like you'd make booklets. You wouldn't believe how many office depots, office maxes I've gone to where they can't either. They don't want to help me because it's a lot of time. Um, or they can't help me or they haven't been what really happens more is since the merger a lot of people They've hired a lot of people and they haven't trained them how to use the machines So you have a lot of people who just can't do that so I Can definitely understand if your reason for not wanting to do minis is you don't have anywhere to get them printed um, I own an $80 little Dell toner printer so it uses toner, it doesn't use um, dye-based ink, it doesn't use like that water-based dust jet ink that most people use. It consumes less ink, the print quality is better, in my opinion, I'm happier with it. It's a really fast little printer, and honestly, I buy knockoff ink. I don't even buy like the official Dell ink, because I think it's kind of expensive, so I buy ink that's sold in like recycled cartridges, and I mean, it goes through ink. At least it went through ink really quick printing Lilliputian Living. Now, Lilliputian Living is a dense little book. So I guess it's understandable that it would go through ink quick with Lilliputian Living. But in general, I use it for all my minis. I've used it for my color minis as well. And I'm happy enough with it. I think the investment was worth my while. I know if minis in general were more of a thing, I would definitely make my money back on it. Believe it or not, I print my stickers on it and my stickers have paid more than paid for the cost of the printer. In fact, I'm on my second of those printers because I used the first one to death. The heat element died in it and it wouldn't fuse the toner to the paper. So I bought another for the same price. And I will probably use the second one to death as well. And then I'm gonna buy a nicer one because I really can't justify putting that much ecological waste out into the world. Okay, so we are at nine out of 10. Another, another thing I think is kind of a problem with minis is that a lot of us live kind of far from each other and we would love to trade. Like I have a friend who's like, I want to buy your book. And I was like, no, there's something of yours I want. I wish we could just trade. Uh, so we live far apart from each other. So that doesn't help with the whole like mini comic culture. Now you might live in an area where zine culture is, you know, a lot more of a thing. Oh, this is not working the way I wanted it to. It's just not as, as spackler. So you might be thinking I'm talking crazy. I live in Tennessee in the South. 
And maybe, maybe my, maybe my zines just suck. I don't know. Cause like, I don't get a lot of people asking to trade, but then I'll talk about trades with people and then they'll be really excited and be like, oh yeah, I really wanted to trade. So that's why I think I want to do a trade sign. That way people don't have to feel intimidated. Also doing trades means I get to come home with more books. Seriously, because I'm not coming home with my books so I can carry more weight and I'm not spending additional money I'm, or money that I earned by selling minis. I'm just going direct to market. I mean, making, selling minis is cool too, especially if people don't have anything to trade, but you know, trading minis for minis is really cool because I buy a lot. Um, I have like 10 of those magazine holders and they're all full of minis and each one of them can hold probably like 25 to 50 mini comics in them. So I have a lot of minis that I've purchased over the years. I'm a big supporter of it. And sometimes I paid out the nose. Sometimes I paid like 10 bucks for a mini that's in black and white. And it's like, why did I do that? But it's because I want them to continue to exist. And sometimes that means I have to pay a lot of money to someone who's kind of new to it so that A, I can have their cool mini and B, they will continue to make minis because I mean, honestly, if you're always, it's great to do things for fun and I do a lot of things for fun, but if you're always losing money at it, you're not going to make, like in, in terms of product, you're probably not going to continue to make them because you just feasibly cannot do it. Okay, last one, at least until my toner comes in so thank you guys so much for hanging out with me as i doodle and decorate my minis it's been it's been fun for sure at least for me i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope me chatting about minis inspires you guys to make your own and maybe someday we can set up like a big mini trade. I hear people talk about sticker trades now and sticker trades make more sense than mini trades in that you can just pop stickers in an envelope and mail them for 40 something cents. You don't have to pay $3 to mail um, a bubble wrap mailer the way I do when I mail minis. So I definitely understand the appeal of sticker trades and we'll probably be participating in some soon. I hope at least always love engaging with other artists. I often feel like that's not something that is always available to me. So it's something I definitely start to miss. I mean, I don't mean to make Tennessee sound like put on because it's really not. And I do have an opportunity at least twice a year, often more often, to engage with other artists and trade with other artists. So I'm not trying to slam Tennessee. I'm just saying we don't necessarily have a big comic culture here. So that's not necessarily an option for me year round. And I guess I'm assuming that it is an option for some people, some places. And that's really cool if it is. If you live in one of those places, I hope you are well taking advantage of it. Okay, I'm gonna fix those eyes with some black and gold sparkle. Okay, so I am just about done. People have asked me if I plan on offering these online. I need to revamp my online store that so that I can better display things like minis and comics. So I do intend at some point on offering all of my minis for sale, but you can always find them from me at cons. And if you see me at a con and you've been thinking about getting one, one or multiples of the minis I have, don't hesitate. I wouldn't hesitate to do so. Um, especially if there's like a particular cover you see that you like, cause like I showed you guys in this video, all the covers are different and I don't intend on always decorating my covers 
So it's sort of a limited edition kind of thing. Plus, like I said earlier in the video, if you know, you don't, and this isn't a threat, this is just me talking. If you don't support an artist manufacturing a product you like, if you don't buy that product for whatever reason, um, then they're not gonna manufacture that product because it's not financially feasible. So if you like minis and you wanna see minis continue, the best way to do that is to buy minis, not just make minis or to trade for minis, you know? I totally understand that we're all kind of functioning on limited budgets. So thank you guys again for hanging out with me today and I hope to see you again really soon. Bye guys!